What was that? It's a commander's signal. We're ordered to get underway. Is harm done? I don't know. Loose the mizzen topsail. Loose the mizzen topsail, Mr. Sprague! Aye, aye, sir. Street hole! Will there be more firing? Not unless the French declare war. Which isn't due to happen this week. This is the berth deck where the crew sleep and eat. The wardroom where you'll be quartered is just above us. And don't pay any attention to what you've heard about Navy food. This is a short voyage and we've plenty of fresh provision aboard. Gentlemen, this is Mr. Harrison. Make sure you look after him now. This is Ned and Seth. Aye, sir. Aye, sir. One hammock, quite comfortable with a bit of practice, and your very own nine-pounder. Whose quarters are these? Oh, don't worry about Lieutenant Draper. It's a short trip, and he and Lieutenant Bertie are on different watches. I'm afraid you must excuse me, but I should go back on deck. The air here is... Poisonous. You'll get used to it. Most people don't notice it after the first couple of years. Darling, is that you? Yeah. Why are you waking the children? I'm not waking them. Well, you've woken Laura. I'm sorry, Miss Gary. No, I'm all right. Night, everyone. I know you don't like having a lodger, but we don't exactly have much choice at the moment, do we? I suppose we don't. I'm going to bed. Make sure you turn out the lights. Good night. Captain in the wardroom. Relax, gentlemen. I came to see that our guest was comfortable. Mr. Harrison chose not to die this evening, sir. Uh, his stomach did the choosing. We'll keep an eye on him, Lieutenant Draper. The Admiral won't be too pleased if we lose him. I tried to take a reading from his machine this evening and plotted a position that had us sailing through the city of Corona. <laughs> <laughs> I've brought you a little broth. It'll help ease your stomach. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. <coughs> Mr. Campbell, can you do me a little kindness? My machine holds to London time, which is different from the time aboard the ship. I need to have a reading of the clock at ship's midday precisely. Can you do that for me? Aye, sir. <laughs> I'm not much of a sailor, I'm afraid. <laughs> oh, how long have you been at sea? Four years. God's sake, why? I was pressed. That was my own decision. I was apprentice to the master of a cutter out by Argyle. We'd heard there was an English frigate pressing men farther south, but we didn't expect to find them anywhere near us. Yeah. What happened? We gave them a good run, but they caught us in the end. They had twice the canvas. They took every man except myself and the master. We two were supposed to get it back to port. 
But you didn't. The first mate was a good friend of mine. He'd been married two weeks before. He was in a terrible way. I offered to take his place. All hands! Try and finish your broth. I'm no matter, Mr. Harrison. I was young. I didn't want to spend my whole life on a cutter. Sir Charles, I must thank you for your help with Mr. Harrison's machine. Uh, Mr. Halley, if your machine can do what its maker claims, then I will make you a promise. Within 12 months, His Majesty's Navy will control the high seas. No one will move on water without our permission. I'm not sure that is quite what he has in mind. Who cares what is in the man's mind? Very little except the ticking of his damn clock was my impression. But if he gives us the power to navigate the ocean without holding on to each other's coattails like blind men in a brothel, I'd give him 20,000 pounds a year! What? You found your legs at last. I apologize for my behavior, sir. There's not a man among us who hasn't felt like you have, sir. No apology required. How's your machine? I need to take some more readings before we arrive in Lisbon. You've got two days by my reckoning. Thank you, sir. Excuse me, sir. I think I preferred him when he was sick. <laughs> Fifty-one. Fifty. <sighs> it's no good. I still have us twenty miles in land. Check again. I have. Look, my reading on the first day was close to Proctor's. For the last two days, my clock has lost two seconds, three seconds, maybe four. But according to the map, we've lost four minutes or more. Map must be wrong. We sighted Cape Finisterre this morning. The map is true. I'm writing a report to the Admiralty about your machine. They wish to know if the voyage has been a success. I'm not entirely sure what to say. I cannot tell till I get back to London and compare it with my pendulum clock. I suppose you think I'm a bloody fool. Well. Wow. Don't worry, I'm used to it. But I know a little navigation, and I can read the time on your machine. It's not showing the true longitude. You do realize that, don't you? Yes. Now, do you know why it isn't working? Something's happened to the machine. Some kind of accident while I was ill. You mean it stopped? I'm not sure. Perhaps. I'm over four minutes slow. Yet while I've been with the machine these last three days, I'm certain it kept true time. That is indeed remarkable. Well, we must tell the Admiralty then to wait till you get back to London, then, mustn't we? Thank you. Thank you. Proctor, excellent time. No sign of the dolphin who left two days before you. Thank you, sir. <sighs> who is that? Admiral Sir John Balkan. Not a man I'd wish to sail with. The ships have a habit of being captured. Maybe because they're usually weighed down with wine and tobacco. 